it's Dr. Ken here with you with Electromagnetism Practice Knowledge Assessment T10 T and T11 from the training package and this is the final one. So again just to review how the video works uh, I'll pose a question or a problem then uh, you pause the video and try to solve the problem then if you come off pause I'll again give you a hint you can go on pause and try and continue to the solution. Then I'll provide the answer, but the power of this system is that I'll also explain how we got to that answer. And then you play the video and proceed to the next question. So, number one, the diagram pictured is a DC motor configured as what kind of motor? A a shunt motor, B, a series motor, C, a shunt motor with field control, or a compound motor. So here's your hint, what kind of circuit is represented? Is it series, is it parallel? It should give you some idea. So this is a shunt motor with field control. So you can see it's shunt because we've got a parallel path for the shunt of the current through the shunt field. And we've got a variable resistor in series, meaning we can control the current through the field. Therefore, it's a shunt motor with field control. Question two, the diagram pictured is a DC motor configured as what this time? Is it a shunt motor? Is it a compound motor? Is it a shunt motor with field control? Is it a compound motor with field control? So here's your hint again. What kind of circuit is represented? Is it series parallel or combination of both maybe? So it's compound because the field winding has two parts. It has a shunt part and a series part. Therefore, it is compound. But it also still has a variable resistor, meaning that there's also got some field control. So it's compound motor with field control. Question three, a DC motor is rated at 230 volts, produces a torque of 60 newton meters while rotating at 900 RPM. Determine the power at the shaft in kilowatts and the current taken from the supply if the motor is operating at 82% efficiency. So pause here while you do the calcs. Here's some hints. Power out equals NT divided by 9.55. Input power is equal to the output power divided by the efficiency percent. And I equals P divided by V. So again, pause here. If you didn't know the formulas and use the information there to do the question. So here's our fully worked answer. The power out <coughs> formula is simply NT. So we were told that we had um, 60 Newton meters, 900 RPM, divide all that by our constant of 9.55, giving us 5.6 kilowatts. So next step is to say okay well that's the output. How can we get the input? Well they told us what the efficiency percentage was. So we simply take the input power of 5650 sorry the output power of 5.6 and divide it by 0.82 
and that gives us 6890 or 6890 watts of energy out. Of course, we want to find out what that current is. So it's down to Ohm's law, I equals the power divided by the voltage. So here's our power in divided by our voltage, which was given to us in the question. You can see up here we've given the voltage and it rounds out to a nice 30 amps. So 5.65 kilowatt output power and 30 amps input. Question four, the core of a DC machine armature is laminated to A, reduce hysteresis, B, reduce eddy currents, C, strengthen the armature, D, simplify construction. So why do we laminate the armature? What else is involved with the lamination? So you can see here on the uh, on the picture we've got here, you can see here very clearly all the laminations. But it's more than just the laminations in and of themselves. What's special about each of the laminations? So the answer is to reduce the eddy currents because each of the laminations is actually got an oxide etched on them which means that they are electrically isolated from each other. Therefore, doing the laminations means that we're not going to get eddy currents flowing because each lamination is literally electrically isolated from the next. They're not magnetically isolated, but they are electrically isolated. Therefore, it reduces the number of currents, eddy currents. Question five, which test is used to determine stray losses in a DC machine? So here's a hint. What are stray losses all about? What do we mean by stray losses? Is it the load test, lock rotor test, short circuit test, no load test? It's the no load test. So if you have no load on it and you measure the amount of energy going in and you know the amount of energy required out, whatever's left in between has to be the stray losses. No matter whether that is friction, windage, whatever. The no load test tells you exactly how much energy is being absorbed in the machine to make the machine do its job without any load. Six, the efficiency of a DC machine are at its maximum when A, losses are at their minimum, B, copper and eddy current losses are equal, C, iron and friction losses are the same, or D, where the losses are at their maximum. So A, B, C, or D. So here's your hint. How is efficiency calculated? What's the what's the formula range that we use to get efficiency? So the answer here is when losses are at their minimum. So when we've got the minimum amount of losses, we've got the maximum amount of efficiency happening. Even though copper and eddy current losses may be equal, but there are other losses to consider. Iron and friction losses, again, they've got to be considered. All losses are at their maximum. No, no, losses are at their maximum when it shoots at its most inefficient. But when a machine is at its maximum efficiency, the losses logically must be at their minimum. Seven, the total copper losses of a DC motor are the sum of what? A, 
iron and windage losses, B, eddy current and hysteresis losses, C, armature and field winding power losses, or D, friction and windage losses. So the hint is the word copper. So which ones of these are going to be around the use of copper? So the answer this time is armature and field windings. Iron, no copper involved. Windage, no copper involved. Eddy currents are around steel. Hysteresis losses are around steel. Friction is around the bearings. Windage is around the rotor rotating through the air. So just by process of liminization, A, B and D have nothing to do with current. Armature is made of copper wire and the field winding is made of copper wire. So obviously those are the copper losses. The curve below shows the characteristics between efficiency, speed and current versus torque. At which point is the greatest efficiency being achieved? So at maximum speed B, just before the rated torque, C, at rated torque, or D, at maximum current. So what is efficiency about? So think about just efficiency, nothing else, just efficiency. The answer is B, just before the rated torque. So you can see here, we're achieving our maximum efficiency, which is the green curve. You can see rated torque, right, happens here. And here's our rated current and our stall torque and maximum current occurring. So there's where we'd like efficiency to occur, but unfortunately efficiency actually occurs in here just before we get to rated torque. Our efficiency just starts to drop off a little as we hit. And of course, this is the operating space of the machine here. It operates a little outside its maximum efficiency. Nine, a DC motor has an output shaft power of 110 kilowatts and an input power of 135 kilowatts. Determine the percent efficiency and the total losses in kilowatts. So here's your hint, uh, percent efficiency equals output divided by input times 100 and losses equal input minus output. So here's our calc, our efficiency is simply going to be 110 divided by 135. So it's the numbers from the equation, output on input, and then simply multiply by 100 on 1 to turn it into a percentage. In this particular case, giving us 81.5%. What were the losses? Well, we simply knew that the input was 135, the output was 110, subtract 110 from 135, and in this particular case, we have 25 kilowatts 
of losses. So that brings us to the end of T10 and T11 and the end of our practice revision tests for electromagnetism.